was a miraculous but natural outgrowth of a wonderful idea that my husband and his sister had for my mother-in-law's 80th birthday. They wanted to commission three songs by three women composers. And those composers were Vivian Fung, Stacy Garrup, and me. Each of us wrote to texts that were based on actual material from her life. She loved music. She adored singing more than anything else. And one of her frequent remarks when asked, if you could do anything else besides law, what would you have chosen? And she would kind of drift off and say, well, I would have loved to be a great opera diva. So the, the joy of sharing with her that this creation was coming to life through song was fun for both of us. Justice Ginsburg's impact on the court, I hope and believe, will be felt for years. She transcends, I think, the you know sort of one vote that a justice represents. People think of her as sort of a moral compass. To be sure, as a lawyer and as a dean of a law school, I am very much attracted to the manner in which she fought for social justice through the courts. I want to believe that the courts, the legal system, the rule of law are a productive manner for peaceably analyzing and improving our social conditions. Her story so clearly illustrates what we aspire to as a nation. Every day I see evidence of her influence in small ways, in large ways. But the fun part is receiving photographs of friends who dress their children in the robe and the collar and the glasses because they love RBG. They just love the tiny little bubby who doesn't look like she could pack the punch that she does, but who has all the force of righteousness behind her. In addition to the you know, decades of really important judicial scholarship and opinion writing and teaching and lawyering. She became someone that little girls could look up to and that women who aren't necessarily interested in law or practicing law, but who they understood was fighting for them. Justice Ginsburg entire career is inspiring uh, to many lawyers, to many students, um, certainly to the students that I work with. Uh, and it's inspiring because of what law school was like at the time for women. I'm not saying law school right now is entirely great for women, but particularly at the time she was one of nine in her entire law school class. But she became one of the most important advocates in the Supreme Court, one of the most important litigators who used the law to make real social change um, in many decades. I think this court will miss her voice on issues of sex equality. I think it will miss her voice on issues of constitutional law and criminal law. Um, there are other voices on the court, but those voices come from perspectives that are different from hers. I think she definitely had an influence paving the way for women to enter law, both law school and legal careers. And it was partly her and the bravery of being the first in a class, and, and the other women of that generation who were all sort of alone in their law school classes. But also, it was her early successes in litigation that showed that law can be a vehicle to pave the way for women to make advances. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in both her career as a lawyer, as a judge, and then as a justice, was a warrior for issues of gender justice and social justice more broadly. One great example of that is the, is the Craig versus Boren case, in which she was the lawyer in the Supreme Court. Craig versus Boren case involved a lower drinking age for women than for men, which she attacked as unconstitutional sex discrimination. 
From one perspective, you could think about the law as benefiting women, as enhancing their liberty, as enhancing their options in life. But the way in which she attacked it in saying that it was unequal is that it reinforced certain stereotypes, gender-based stereotypes. And you saw that over and again in the way that she litigated cases and in the way then that she decided cases as a judge and a justice. One of the cases that I really admired her role in was Obergefell, which is the case that legalized same-sex marriage at the federal level in the United States. If you listen to the oral arguments, I would venture a wager that a lot of this came from this beautiful marriage that she had. I think we know that she doesn't think she would have been as successful without Marty, her husband. Part of that, of course, it's about the Constitution and equality, but part of it is also about having loved somebody that moved you forward. A wonderful Evanston composer, Stacy Garrup, was given Marty Ginsburg's last letter to his wife, which he wrote just a few days before he passed away. And it's a very touching piece, as you'll hear. But the process of singing the letter that Stacy Garrup set, that was very hard to sing. I really had to work as a professional to bring the emotion to the audience without bringing it to myself. And I would say it took me at least six months of practice before I could really confidently perform that piece without welling up at some point. My dearest Of course, she adored receiving her birthday present, and uh, I brought along today uh, the thank you note that she sent to Jim and I after the party at which we debuted the songs, which was a complete surprise to her. Anybody who receives one of these handwritten notes on the Supreme Court of the United States, Washington, D.C. stationery is already getting a little chill. And this one says, Chambers of Justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, this one is right after her big 80th birthday party. And she sent home to us in Chicago a few little things from the event. Souvenirs from April 6, 2013, for James and Patrice, with appreciation for making 80 feel like 50, and love only music can convey. Polarization. 
How much more can our music, all of us who have written about her and all of us who will write about her, how much more can that do to further her legacy and tell her story? Boy, I have no idea, but I know for sure that it's important. Oh.